my name is Tyler Clark, Swansea resident. I'm happy to be back to bring you some more card magic. If you don't know much about me, I'm a Swansea resident, case I graduate, and in my spare time, I just started learning how to do card magic a couple years ago. I'm a teacher now, I have a card magic class at my school, and my classroom walls are filled with playing cards, and whenever I can, especially for the Swansea Library, I like to do magic performances. So today, I'm gonna actually show you the very first card trick I learned how to do. This involves a deck of normal playing cards. I have a bicycle brand here. And when you go in, it really does not matter with the order of the cards. They can be shuffled, you can shuffle it, you can give your spectator the cards to shuffle. It doesn't really matter. So for this, it's gonna be a little tricky because I actually have uh, Director Adam Kitchen off screen. I'm gonna be relying on him <laughs> to give me some numbers for this as we go. It'll make more sense later on. So for this particular trick, it involves only nine cards. Oops, it involves only nine cards. And it doesn't matter what nine cards they are. Your spectator can pick them or you can just do it randomly. In this case, I will do it uh, pretty randomly. I'm just gonna put down nine cards here. As you can see, they all are all different. It doesn't matter if you have two tens, two aces, whatever, but if your spectator wants to switch out any of the cards, they certainly uh, can do so. Let me move these a little bit further up. Okay, so right now, as Director Adam Kitchen can see the card in front of me, I'm gonna ask him to visualize a card. Adam, do you have a card in your head? Adam, I want you to tell me, just through the window, you can't see this window, is it in row one, two, or three? It is in row one, all right. So we're gonna collect all of the cards here. And now I'm gonna do this one more time with nine cards like this. All right, I'm gonna straighten this out. And I'm gonna ask once again through the window, uh, Adam, do you still see your card on the table? It is in row two, all right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to collect all of the cards. Now I'm gonna do this one more time, but I'm going to do this so all of the cards are face down like this. All right, so we have three rows of three. Adam, I want you to pick two numbers. I want you to give me, with one hand, a one, a two, or a three, and the other hand, a one, a two, or a three. I want you to pick two of these rows. Can you give me the rows right now? One, and what's the other one you have? Three. So we're gonna eliminate all of the cards in the middle here, because Adam picked one and three. So now we're gonna go by columns. We have six cards, but instead of doing rows, we're gonna do column one, two, or three. Adam, I want you to pick one of the columns for me. Column one. Do you want another column or do you wanna stick with that one column? Just to stick with that one, all right? So now we're gonna move these off to the side. Now we are left with two cards. Adam, can I ask you what your card was? Can you, can you I can hear you. The Ace of Diamonds, so. Adam, I want you to pick a number, one or two. We'll do, you, hit, you, you, had, you held up a one, you said two. You want, you want one or two? We'll do one, all right. So, process of elimination, you can pick any cards, and Adam Kitchen, you say you wanted card number one, and it was the Ace of Diamonds. Well, believe it or not, the card that is remaining is actually the Ace of Diamonds. Now to explain how this happened, because you may be wondering, how did that happen? It was a choice of nine cards, and he ended up with the one card. Well. I'm gonna teach you a little something that is called a magician's choice. And what I mean by a magician's choice is without your spectator realizing it, you're essentially forcing them into a selection. Now, I'm gonna put nine cards down again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there really will be nine cards. All of them are different. And the beginning of this is truly a free choice. Adam could have picked any card he wanted. I did not make him pick the Ace of Diamonds. That's the one he picked. So let's assume it's the Ace of Clubs, which is right here. So I say pick a card in one, two, or three. So when he, if he says row three, I know that the card is going to be either the Three of Diamonds, the Ace of Clubs, or the Nine of Diamonds. But when I collect the cards, I do this in a very particular order. And here I'm gonna grab the cards last. But when I put the cards down, watch. Now I'm going up and down instead of left to right, meaning 
all three cards that were in the bottom row last time are now divided into row one, two, or three. I still don't know what the card is. It could be any of these. Now if Adam Kitchen were to say row one, I know immediately that the Ace of Clubs is the card. So when I collect the cards, it doesn't matter where the other ones are, I just need to know where the Ace of Clubs is. So right here, I put it on the bottom of this very small deck for a reason. Because when I do this, there are truly eight random cards, but all I know is where I put the Ace of Clubs, which is right here on the bottom. I know that, you will know that, your audience will not. And for this trick, I like to have them, the first time they can, it's really up to you, you can have them pick one or two. For this case, if I were to say have him pick two numbers, let's say he picks one and two. The card is in three, so if he chooses one and two, I just eliminate all of these cards. Notice, with careful wording, I did not say pick two rows to eliminate. I said pick two numbers, but I'm not telling them what I'm going to do with that information. So if I were to say pick two numbers and he says one and three, which is what happened last time, I eliminate all of the cards in row two. Then I slide this up. Now this is your choice. You can go by rows. I went by columns one, two, and three. I believe last time it was in column one. He said, let's say he says three this time. So then I get rid of all of these cards. Now you're left with two cards. A random card here, and you know that this is your, their card. I like to say pick a number from one to two and then keep rotating the cards. So no matter what number they pick, you're always gonna end up with that card in the middle, which is right here. In this case, it was the Ace of Clubs that have done correctly. It'll be the Ace of Clubs right there in the middle. Once you master the magician's choice and you force your spectator into making any sort of decision, you can make this trick work with anything. If I were to put some more cards on the table like here, and I can shuffle around. So I know that the card here is in the middle and I say pick two numbers. If they pick the two numbers, that, and when the card is under one, you keep those. If they pick these two numbers, then you will eliminate them. Never phrase it as saying, I want you to pick two rows or two cards to eliminate, because then if they actually pick the card, the, your trick is over because they're eliminating the card. Never give them the choice. Always just say, pick two numbers, and then you at that point will decide what to do based on information. So that's the magician's choice. If you practice it a bit, and you know, memorize where the card is and how you can manipulate it that way, you should always be able to do it. It's the very first trick I learned how to do. I still enjoy using it to fool people, and I hope you can practice it yourself. So the trick I'm gonna show you how to do now, I would say is more of an advanced trick. This took me a lot of practice to get down, but with enough practice yourself, you should be able to do it. It involves something that is called sleight of hand meaning you're going to do something directly in front of your spectator, but if you do it fast enough, they won't actually notice it. And if you do this trick enough times right in a row, your audience member will probably pick up on it, but once or twice usually gets them pretty good, at least from what I understand and what I've done. So the same thing, normal deck. It involves only eight cards. So I'm going to grab eight cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm just going to quickly show the camera here. I don't know what they are, but all of these eight cards are different. So if I grab one card at random here, I'm going to just show it over here. I'm not going to look and see what it is. I'm just going to put it up there for everyone to see it. So you show your audience member the card, you put it in. So then I like to tell them, I'm going to show them four cards. The end of the four cards, they're going to tell me yes or no, they saw what their card is. And here's how I like to do this. I'm going to slide it off so it's easy. So we got the Ace of Hearts, we got the Nine of Clubs, we got the Four of Clubs, whoops, and we got the Ten of Diamonds. Then you would ask your audience member, did, you see their, did they see their card, yes or no? If they were to say yes, and you say okay, and you put the remaining cards in the box. Now you're left with their cards on the table directly in front of them. And then I like to do is I like to snap my fingers or do something like that. Then I say, what was your card? I was told off camera that the card here is the nine of clubs. So I say, okay, nine of clubs is on the table. Then I like to display the cards. And all of a sudden they realize, wait a second, the nine of clubs isn't there. And I say, yes, because when you weren't actually looking, the nine of clubs magically jumped into the box. 
And this is usually when they have absolutely no idea what went on, then you can show them that the other cards in the box are also all random. But, as much as I would love to possess the psychic ability to actually make a card teleport into a box, I don't have that ability. I want to show you how it's done. I like to do this too. You can show your audience before the trick if you want that it really is a normal box. Here, I'll show the camera this so you can see. Now I'll hold it up. There's really, there's, there really is nothing in this box. It's just an empty box of playing cards. Yeah. So you show them that the box is empty. You put it off to the side. Eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It really doesn't matter what the cards are. They can be totally random cards. You can have your spectator pick the cards. You can show your spectator eight cards and say, do you want to get rid of any of these? And they can hear. I'll get rid of this one randomly and I'll replace it with this card. I don't know what card it was. I don't know what card I even get rid of. I'll never actually know. I'll put it right there. So then you show them again, it's eight cards. Then you say, pick, pick any card you want. And let's say they grab this card out of it. I'm going to show the camera what this card is. And you put it into the deck. But I put the card into the very small deck very strategically. What I have done is I've actually put it into the fourth position. It's the king of clubs. I'll actually look at it this time for the sake of showing how it's done. You need to make it so it's in the fourth spot. And then it looks like you're just randomly mixing up the deck. You go one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three four. But if you do it fast enough, it really looks like you're mixing up the whole deck. What I have done is I have strategically put their card into the second position right here. So that's the king. Now you slide. I like to grab with three fingers at the top and a thumb on the bottom. And I slide the seven, then I slide the king, then I slide the ten, and I slide the queen. I put the other cards here on the table. I put the other cards in the box, which I showed was empty, and then I snap. Now, everyone, including director Adam Kitchen, saw me put that king on the table. Correct, Adam? You saw me put the king on the table. Well, I actually didn't. I actually put the king in the box. And that's the sleight of hand. It's very, very, very subtle, but now I'll try to slow it down for you to show it. But when I do this, I grab three at the top. It's hard to see. I know my hand is kind of blocking the camera, but here's the seven. It's, so I slide off with my thumb. I kind of grip here. Then I slide the king, but watch. I have the king kind of on my fingertips. As I grab the queen, I actually slide the king behind the queen, and then I slide the 10. Then I put the other cards here, and then the king is very, very nicely sitting in this position, and I put that in the box. So then when you snap, your audience member thinks that the card has actually jumped into the box when in fact it was there the whole time because of the sleight of hand. I'm gonna do this in real time speed. I'm gonna skip ahead, so I'm gonna already move the king to the second position but in real time this is how fast it would really look as i showed you before you got the ten of spades you got the king of clubs you got the seven of hearts whoops let me try that one more time you got the king of spades you got the king of clubs you got the seven of hearts and then you got the queen of hearts right there you put the other ones in the box that wasn't really the best as you can see that once it slows down but the the king is in the box now even me right now doing it you're going to mess this one up because it involves doing something very, very fast. And I'm not a professional magician. I don't take the stage courses or I don't have like these big shows at Foxwoods when I have thousands of people in the audience watching me. I do this with my free time. So I'll do it for the ace of spades this time. So you grip at the top, you got the ace of spades, you got the, the eight of spades, sorry. You got the ace of spades, you got the eight of clubs, and you got the ten of Spades right there, and I accidentally slid another one off. We put those here. When you snap, one, two, three, where's the ace? Oh, wait, it teleported into the box. This is why I called the trick the teleporting card, because your audience member, if they don't know any better, really thinks the card is teleported in the box. But I spent more time than I'd like to admit getting this down. It's all just muscle memory and getting your fingers to cooperate. So again, you got the seven, you got the ace, you got the queen, you got the king. Just like that, you go there, put the other cards. It doesn't have to be in the box. I used director Adam Kitchen's sweatshirt pocket before. 
They have like a little pocket here. It's good because then it makes it seem like it teleported into their pocket. One, two, three. The ace isn't there because it was in the box just like that. Again, it, you, it's going to take you a bit to get the specifics of this one down. It took me, out of all the tricks I know, that one probably took me the longest time to master. But if you're just watching TV one night and you have the cards in your hand and you're just practicing, it'll take a while. But if you can do this trick very well, you really can hit a lot of people with it. The problem with doing it is if you do it over and over and over and over again, as I have found out, your audience member be like, gee, why is the card always second? And that's when they start paying more attention. You don't want them to pay attention to what you're doing. You want to distract them or maybe they can look, but if you do it fast, they may not actually notice. But you, you want to do it only like once, maybe twice, the absolute most three times, and then after a while they will start to notice. So that's a more advanced trick that I, that I know. Um, you can follow what I did. There are similar other videos out there that teach you. The one I showed you, I based off of someone else's trick on YouTube that I learned and watched. So again, it'll just take some practice. It'll take some time, but with, if you stick with it, you should be able to get it down like I did. So hope you can try that one out too.